now uh, let's continue our discussion with the uh, uh, previous lecture that was uh, developing our first EJP and uh, today we are going to learn uh, something about the session bin and how it is going to be implemented inside our programs or inside our enterprise applications so uh, session bin uh, now let us read these sentences something like Mike uh, hi my name is Mike uh, this is the client request and the service provided by the container is uh, service hello Mike then Mike again asks uh, do you know my name then the service uh, responds to it yes your name is Mike and next Mike how much money is in saving bank account uh, then uh, the stateless session being gives the gives the answer in the form of uh, 100 then Mike please transfer 200 from checking account uh, A to account B then uh, SLSP says OK done. Then Mike, how much money is in my same bank account? Uh, account B. Then SLSP says 300. So in this uh, series of requests uh, between the client and the EJB service. So the client here is Mike and the service or SLSP is the EJB service. So this is the conver conversational state and we refer to the information exchange and remembered within the context as service of request between the client and uh, EJB. So how exactly the request uh, starts? So the request will be in something like this. So the proxy will be there as usual and the request will be done and we are having uh, a pool of instances present inside the EJB container. So we have the uh, A, B and C which are the instances present inside the EJB container and the uh, request 2 is been done uh, by making it to the same proxy but there is no guarantee that the same in instance will be provided for the request to as well. So in this case we see the request is serviced by A instance and in this case we see the service is in the, uh, serviced by B instance. So uh, in th this is the case with the stateless session B. So uh, next we see about something called as XML deployment descriptor uh, which is found in meta INF EJP jar file uh, in the form of XML and the it has something like called as enterprise bean element which contains uh, the element contained in EJB jar uh, defines the set of EJPs we are going to deploy that particular application and the session uh, element and uh, which denotes that you are deploying the session bean and EJB name which is the name session bean and identity for your reference and the remote and the local interfaces which uh, identify the business interfaces of the bean and the EJB class which declares the bean class and the session type whether it is stateful or stateless in the form of session bean and if there is any environment entry then which is used for initializing the values used uh, externally for the bean class. So this is written inside the XML, XML deployment descriptor. So uh, these things normally we don't try to touch them because uh, all of these are maintained by our internal uh, container uh, that is container itself will do all these things but uh, just for the clarity sake we just try to see what are there inside this so the first is session context so this is nothing but uh, the context in which that session is going to work and uh, the variables which are used while working with the particular bean so uh, the java x.ejb.session context interface provides a view into ejb containers environment so this is the environment of our ejb container so this is done by using uh, the code something like at the rate of resource annotation so let's see it from here at the resource annotation uh, ejb provides resources for our client so we use resource then uh, we are using private session context the object of the session context then the session context allows us to obtain the information such as the current user who is invoking that EJB and lookup entries within the EJB enterprise naming context and uh, we see what is there inside the uh, bean session. Uh, okay, So here we are making use of interface uh, something called a session context which extends java x dot EJB EJB context and here we are going to see get EJB local object it gets the local object of that EJB then get EJB object which gets the instance present inside the container then uh, we make use of the message driven pin in this case we get message context get message context and uh, here we are using get business object 
uh, which is present inside the container which is being created inside the container in the form of object and get invoked business interface so on the whole when we are trying to see the session context it uh, just tells us the status of what exactly is there inside the session bean container so uh, next we are let us try to work with the stateless session bean so the stateless session bean is uh, annotated by using at the rate of stateless and we are using a bean class called as a and because of the naming convention, we use a underscore bean implements a underscore business remote. So this is a business remote is the interface. So at the resource private session context context, then we are using some method and we are using uh, bean remote method b and bean remote by business method myself equals to get business object a underscore bean remote dot class and b dot a method myself. So we are just trying to make use of one session bin where we are trying to call the session context and try to see which uh, functions are being invoked. So we are getting the remote references to the b underscore bean business method and uh, trying to make use of the object of what is being invoked inside the container. So the same thing is being continued here. Uh, the package ejb dot uh, uh, javax dot ejb. Then we are using the ejb context. Here we can see some methods so look up for object then the timer service uh, which retrieves the timer service then we have the methods called as uh, get caller principle is caller in role user transaction uh, what is the uh, user transaction we are uh, use, trying to see get rollback only then set rollback only then we have a get caller identity get environment get ejb home get ejb local home so all these things can be retrieved by making use of the interface called as ejb context then ejb context got uh, dot get caller principal method is used to obtain the um, security of our ejb so it is written inside java dot security dot principal object representing the client that is currently accessing the beam the principal object can for multiple uh, for example can be used by an HAB to track the identities of clients making updates. Uh, most of the times we see that inside the banks, the updates have to be tracked. So here we are seeing one stateless object or stateless session bean where we are using bank bean implements bank at the resource session context and we are using the object of this and the public void withdraw int account ID double amount first access denied exception and the string modified by equals to principal dot get name so here it will be recorded whenever a user is trying to make use of withdrawing function so similarly is caller enroll so who is a caller enroll we can get the things the same thing we are trying to do for withdraw so the int account id double amount then if amount is greater than ten thousand then whether if he's a manager then the manager will be allowed to draw the 10,000. So uh, it, it will be given access only to the manager or the other people. So we are just trying to check whether it is a uh, caller in role is a manager. So only managers can withdraw more account uh, more than 10k. So we are making use of the manager. Otherwise, uh, new access general exception will be thrown by the withdrawing function. So let us see the life cycle of a stateless session bean wherein we are using a stateless session bean. So first uh, we have a method ready pool. Uh, so let us imagine that our session bean is present inside the container and as soon as the client makes the request uh, then only it is going to get instantiated. So first there will be no any instance present inside the container. Then as soon as uh, I say that there is no any instance then the status is does not exist then as soon as the client is making a request then the session bean will be created by making use of class dot new instance and what are the injections used for that particular bean and what are the things must be done while constructing that particular bean then they will be ready for invoking the methods present inside that particular bean and what are the business methods required by that request will be served then they will they will be destroyed and before destruction what has to be done is written inside the annotation of pre-destroy so 
So this is the life cycle of a stateless session P. Then uh, sometimes we need to make use of even encryption bin and we will consider two techniques that is called as uh, cryptographic hashing or cipher based symmetrical encryption. So we are not going in detail with this but we are just trying to get the idea of what exactly this encryption does. So hello is a request then clear text request so encryption service then what happens we are just trying to encrypt this hello to hash function using uh, HELL and we are using hash function and we are getting some other value for this and compare for equality present inside the stored hash then the HAP is going to uh, see what exactly the text is about. So this is mostly done, of, done when we are working with the banking application. So the contract uh, that is the business interfaces will be having encryption local business and encryption remote business for working with the encryption services. Then the bean implementation class will be having uh, uh, stateless equals to encryption EJB, then local encryption local business dot class and encryption remote business and this will be implemented by encryption bean which is going to see the security of our bean implementation while we are trying to work with the encryption. So similarly we are trying to see what is stateless session, stateful session bean and in the stateful session bean we see that uh, there is a instance pool inside the HAB container and there is a client 1 and client 2 making the request and here the client 1 is making the request through proxy A and it is uh, making use of the instance of A that is instance A is invoked here and this instance A will be there till the client has finished its transaction. So similarly client 2 will be provided with the proxy C and this will be in connection with the uh, client 2 till the client 2 finishes of its transaction. So but in stateless session bin as soon as the request is served it is released but here it will be holding the things till the transaction is over. So now we see the life cycle of a stateful session bin. So inside this we can see of uh, the first state is as usual does not exist. Then as soon as we create it then the new instances will be created and the method ready will be uh, given and whatever business methods are there we are just trying to use them because it is a stateful session bean we make use of two methods called as pre passivate and post activate so before activating what are the conditions must be done and what are the things to be done after uh, deactivating the things so for this we make use of something called as passive uh, which is used for working with the timeout or whatever things has to be done so we make use of this uh, passive uh, block where we are trying to make use of the passivating the bean when uh, there is illegal or a timeout or something like that uh, when there is a loss of that particular session. So when there is a lot of that loss of that particular session then if it is a timeout then it is automatically going to be destroyed by using the passive component inside the EJB container. So uh, here uh, we can see that the pre-destroy method will be called in normal circumstances. And here also we can see there is a timeout. So if, oh, it is typical with the banking applications where uh, we, if we are not trying to disturb the banking application for some time, then automatically it will be timed out and uh, will be asked to log in once again. So there the stateful session being comes into action. So the passivated state. So EJB session context is a transaction. Uh, here GTA, uh, Java transaction. Uh, uh, transaction uh, API then Java dot naming context so JNDI ENC then entity manager entity manager factory so all these things will be used while working with the passivated state and uh, it will be having the references to the resource factories and the bin implementation class will be having post construct pre destroy post activate pre passivate and all these things and it will be using some of the networking clients in the form of FTP client and so on and we are uh, trying to make use of the stateful for bean implementation class and we are using the remote interface compulsorily for this and we are using file transfer remote business dot class and here we need to use even the jndi and we need to use the ejb name for this so we are using uh, local host and everything so ftp client and we use all these annotations so we use a pre passivate pre destroy override for working with this applications so if the client is connected then 
AC connected RS 